Road trip. Yeah, those two words conjure up magical daydreams of seeing the world, bonding with your buddies, peeing in an empty soda bottle, and so much more. Strap yourselves in for our special road trip edition tonight on what? Attack of the Show. Yeah, damn right. Big up on this. <laughs> Attack of the Show. I'm Kevin Pereira. And I'm Olivia Munn. Tonight we're bringing you an Attack of the Show special edition as we prepare for our week-long live coverage of E3, the world's biggest video game event. That's right. We are just eight days yes. out from the year's biggest news on titles for the PlayStation 3, Nintendo Revolution, and the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. Our marathon coverage begins May 9th at 6 p.m. Eastern. You got to keep it right here on G4 all through our E3 countdown for up to the second news about the year's biggest gaming event. Oh, you want more? Could, could there possibly be more? Uh, there is, in fact, more because there will be all new Attack of the Shows beginning May 15th. We'll have a new set, new faces, and more of that signature Attack of the Show attitude. Ah, uh, yes, but in the meantime, you, you like to travel, right? Oh, I love to travel. And thanks to those federal warrants, I always have a reason to keep on the run. Yeah. Well, then you're in for a treat, because tonight we're spanning the globe with our best road trips. First stop, Tokyo. Ooh, I love this one. I lived in Japan for years. I know. We don't talk like that. No, no, no. I wish I'd had someone to help me out when I was there, to be mm -hmm. honest. My trip to Tokyo was a little bit overwhelming. Mm. When you think of Tokyo, toys probably aren't the first thing that come to mind, but as it turns out, there's a number of specialty shops that carry anything and everything you could ever want. One of the more popular stores was Toy Park, located in the Ritzy Ginza district. Now, this store definitely had a Toys R Us kind of feel with plushy animals, dolls, and of course, some of the cutesy Japanese fare that we all know and love. Toy Park started in 1982, so it's been around for about 23 years. There are four floors of toys, all with a different theme, and all together, there are about 50,000 items on display. Some of the more popular trends would be the toys that you can communicate with and also toys that can give you a relaxing effect. Toys are popular in the United States. There are, there are toy stores, but it seems that in, in Japan they're every five feet and they're six stories tall. You know, how do you explain the popularity of toys in Japan? Whether they are toys for kids or adults and you have a wish for fun, there will always be something for everyone. After spending a fistful of yen at Toy Park, I decided to pop on over to a different type of toy store on the other side of town known as Mr. Craft. From top to bottom, Mr. Craft caters to the hardcore toy enthusiast. In fact, here on the fifth floor, people can actually rent spaces to display and sell items from their personal collections. What is the story behind Mr. Craft? Mr. Craft basically started with cars and it expanded to various miniatures and other collections. Like Toy Park, Mr. Craft boasts several floors of fun. From classic Godzilla to designer vinyl, this is truly a collector's paradise. Sweet robots from the 1950s and hot lesbian anime action. Mr. Craft has it all. Instead of mass-produced items, the more popular toys amongst the collectors right now are those produced in limited runs. So when is a toy not a collectible toy anymore? Well, check out these miniature guns that I found at Mr. Craft. This is where it becomes collectible art. Actually, it's deserved that it's in a frame. I mean, look at every little piece of the gun is separate, can be taken out from the bullets to the chamber to the trigger itself. Uh, it's all right here. Well, that does it for the wonderful world of toys here in Tokyo. Now, if you'll excuse me, Got invited to a little tea party at Hello Kitty's, and I have a feeling things might get out of hand. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Don't kid. Looks like you got around pretty well, Kev. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was fine once I learned the Japanese words for basic necessities, like, you know, sushi and sake and, of course, hentai. Mm. Really? That's all you need to know? That's pretty much it. Just a couple more words, actually. Get your food, get your drink, and get your uh, tentacles. <laughs> all right. When I think road trip, I usually think of Big Pimp and Escalade or bitchin' van, nice. but field reporter Brendan Moran, he thinks Segway. 
I said bitchin'. Exciting. Wow. I'm here in Washington, D.C. at the Segway Fest. And there's a lot to see. They've got a monster Segway, a pimp my Segway, a Segway with dogs on it, and so much more. So join me, won't you? So I'm standing in the middle of a very heated Segway rivalry. On one hand, we've got the monster Segway, and over here, we've got the pimp my Segway. Gentlemen, who's gonna win this battle? Well, of course I'll win, because if anybody that has any any class and any any excitement in their life, they're gonna wanna have the chrome spinners and make it right. Harsh words from Monster Segway. Pit my Segway, what do you have to say about that? I pitted a fool, I pitted a fool. I've been training, I've been going and prepping my Segway. Segway, what time is it? It's 9.17. We're running late. <laughs> so Derek, this is the Segway Centaur. That's right. It looks uh, kind of mean. Yeah, well, it, it, it looks it, but it's really not. Um, Can I ride it? There's a throttle. If you push forward, uh -huh. it'll go forward, uh -huh. back, goes back. It's right. very sensitive. Okay. okay. And turning, instead of twisting the left grip, you just turn the handlebars like a bike. All right, now if you want to get up on two wheels, the easiest thing to do is to take your feet off the pegs and put them on the platform and back. All right. Hold, it, hold the throttle yeah. in, okay? All hold right. it in. All right, and twist the handlebar. So you can turn on two wheels. <laughs> it's kind of freaky. <laughs> How fast does this go? Uh, it'll go right around 20 miles an hour. Really? Next. Ah, oh, that's not fair. You know what's kind of funny? There's a lot more people here for the Segway Fest than I thought there would be. And not all of them even have Segways. Here for the Segway Fest, huh? Where are your Segways? Hey, oh, you got a Segway. You getting ready for the Segway Where'd Fest? Where you get that? Well, it's Segway oh, Fest. Oh, my god. Oh, it's a Segway Fest? Yeah. Would you like a little piece number on? Oh, hello. That was weird. <laughs> Did you guys forget your Segways at home? Is that what happened? Yeah. I'll sell you this one for $1,000 right now. See, I can do it with no hands. Wonderful. How fast can you go? 90 miles an hour. What are all these people doing here if they're not here for the Segway Fest? We're here to protest the war in Iraq and the occupation of the US all over the world. That's a downer. Let's get the Segways out of Iraq. What do you think about the sign, make Segways, not war? Do you girls like guys on Segways? Yeah. yeah. How could you not? Man, it's hard to pull off that bad boy thing on a Segway. It's true, you know, but, but Brendan's not really a bad boy. He's more of a bad man. You know, he's Moran. I think it's Moran. Oh, well, either way. He's not a bad man. He's a Moran. I think you can look awesome on a Segway. I think you're crazy. You just do really? a little, yeah, it's like a ghetto lean. You're just like, hey, what's up? Want to like go this? forward? Nope, I'm stopping. Pretty sweet, right? It's fun. It's kind of like a drinking bird. All right, stick around. We've got lots more great road trip stories to share, including a visit to the International Toy Expo when Attack of the Show returns. You gotta stop, you're gonna fall! I know, I was leaned in too much. Uh. Attack of the Show, baby. Attack. Ah, uh, welcome back to Attack of the Show's Road Trip Special Edition. You know, these trips look like way more fun than Road Rule Season 7. I cannot wait to go on the road with you guys. You will get your chance, Olivia, don't Good. worry, but we'll tell you all about that later on. First, we gotta talk toys. Now, Kev, are you one of those mint and box guys? I mean, how seriously do you take your toys? Very, very serious. In fact, serious enough that I flew 3,000 miles to check out the coolest new toys at the New York International Toy Fair. The American International Toy Fair is the largest toy show in the Western Hemisphere. It boasts over 1,500 manufacturers, importers, and distributors representing over 30 countries. And the best part of it is it's 18 and older, so no snot-nosed little kids tugging at your pant leg telling you what they want. If you're a fan of comics, DST's got you covered. What do you have coming up, Mike? We have everything from Spider-Man to Hulk to Thor. We've got a new line of busts. A six-piece diorama, the Sinister Six, which also comes with Spider-Man. And we have full-size Marvel Milestone statues of guys like Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Kraven. You name it, we got it. Yeah! Woo! What's up, Toy Fair? I was just attacked by a robot-controlled insect. Insect is a robotic attack feature. It's actually uh, part of our new science of experimental combat technology segment. 
Uh, what this guy's designed to do is really terrorize little sisters all over the world. Woo, yeah! Get them! So we invented the Pogo Stick in 1918. We're SBI Enterprises. We reinvented it in 2001 with our first model fly bar. That is the 1200. And then at today's Toy Fair, we're giving people the first view of the fly bar 800. But you guys have taken the Pogo Stick to new heights. We, yeah, we re- I'm we, <laughs> no, sorry, did you uh, catch uh, the fun? I'm sorry, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> One of the coolest things coming up from DST is their line of X3 toys. They're on display back here. Wait until you see the Hugh Jackman. Can't do it. What's the latest in marshmallow weaponry or technology? Well, we have two new products this year. This is our blaster. It shoots the big marshmallows. It's a, it's a pump action, single shot. It'll shoot about 50 feet. Oh! So now, is every single vendor around you getting frustrated with all the marshmallows launching? Yeah, they're dodging us like crazy. You come to Monkey Business Sports for? Cool, fun toys to get up off the couch. We have lots of cool stuff. Uh, primarily, everything is foam-based, but there's a lot of high action. It's kind of the stuff that makes kids feel like they're empowered and be able to do stuff. We have a whole line of Skyrockets. They're all based on the same kind of principle. And the way they work is you have your launcher that hooks over the hook, crank it back and hit the roof of jaw that's every single time. Well, that about wraps it up for the 2006 American International Toy Fair. Now, if you'll excuse me, I sadly have to go back to my day job in adulthood where I make a lot of money playing video games for a living. Yeah. I want a Kevin Pereira action figure. Dude, how awesome would that be? So cool. Like, you could, you could bring him over to Malibu Olivia's house. They could play dress up. It'd be awesome. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. But answer me this, Kev. What do you absolutely need on a road trip? Uh, I'm assuming this is besides the road, right? Yeah, I'll spot you the road. Okay, uh, you would uh, you need a ride. <gasps> really? Yeah. Then get a load of SEMA, the annual car customizer show in Las Vegas. Mm. Mm. Back here in Vegas at the SEMA Auto Show, where it's not so much what you put on your car that matters, it's what you put in it. And I'm not talking about air fresheners. So join me, won't you? A lot of these cars, nobody ever gets to drive. They're not street legal, or they're just too difficult. With the exception of my man, David the Fishman Riviere. So, buddy, I'm gonna show you guys the ultimate SUV in the world called the Fish Edition. Open up my radio, play some tunes. I got my Motorola integrated with my iPod into the phone. This is the ultimate, most comfortable seat in the world, man. Now I'm gonna show you guys what I did in the back. How about we put a 22-inch plasma in the back so we can really watch some football games? Bigger's always better. I don't know, some of this stuff just seems a bit much. This is a truck, if you can believe that. What kind of stuff uh, in the neon category are people putting on their cars these days? We're the leaders in the neon product. But what's coming up strong is the LED product. Is this stuff legal? In some states it is, like California, you do not bother. It's some colors that they might bother you with. You have to really check with your local laws. There's a lot of different accessories on all types of cars. The boys from Hazard County were gracious enough to donate their bow and arrow set with TNT on top of it. There's a lot more than just this, though. Although the stars and bars, I think, are a nice touch. So you can stop me from getting speeding tickets, is that right? Yes, sir, that's correct. The LE30 will receive a pulse from a laser gun and combat that, that laser gun by firing a laser of its own. And so I'm driving down the road. Right. Is this thing working automatically? Yes, it's, it's, it's on the moment you start your car. It's jamming the police radar, right? The police laser. Laser. <laughs> yeah. After five seconds, our unit will shut itself down to limit suspicion. Are these legal? Laser's defense systems are legal in most states. I do recommend that you check your local laws before using any of these products. You don't want any hassles. Damn you, Arkansas. Uh, <clears throat> don't want to brag, but uh, I got Lamborghini doors on my Escalade, son. Where? For real. Mmm, not bad. Stay tuned, everybody, for more great Attack of the Show road trips, including a visit to Batman's hometown when Attack of the Show continues. I thought you drove a Kia Sophia. A Daewoo drop top. Oh. Attack of the Show, baby. Attack.
Welcome back to this special edition of Attack of the Show. Even as we're showing you our favorite stunts, we're just eight days out from the year's biggest news on titles for the PlayStation 3, mm -hmm. the Nintendo Revolution, even that little thing called the Xbox 360. Yes, our live marathon coverage begins May 9th at 6 p.m. Eastern. you got to keep it right here on G4 all through our E3 countdown for up to the second news about the year's biggest gaming event. But in the meantime, forget everything you've heard about some cave beneath the bowels of Gotham City. Batman lives in a charming little ski town. I'm here in Ketchum, Idaho at the Magic Lantern Theaters about to see Batman Begins with a real Batman. Adam West himself is due here any moment. We're going to watch it together, and then he is going to review it for us. Don't you folks uh, think it's kind of an irony that I have to pay to see a Batman movie? I'll just use my Batman credit card. You can get one, too, on AdamWest.com. Hey, Brendan, hold the butter. Adam West, imagine seeing you here. Amazing. Shall we? Sure. All Let's right. Go. Wow. Whoa. Ah. The film itself. Yeah. It's called Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. But we all know that you, sir, are where Batman really begins. The one that we just saw, it was um, very rich and well done. Yeah, hello. What, right now? You're kidding. I'll be right there. Adam, I'm sorry, it's an emergency, I've gotta go. The men's room is there, okay. it's back here. Yeah. Sorry about that, Adam. Oh, you're back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How, what'd you do? I just had to take care of something mm -hmm. outside really fast, no big deal. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the bat suit. <laughs> you had a different bat suit than the one in the films, right? Yes. Uh, well, the whole production was more lighthearted, I think, yes, more accessible to uh, the family spectrum. Katie Holmes plays the heroine in this film. You yourself uh, had a run-in with a number of uh, females on the show. I've never had a run-in with Katie Holmes, if that's what you're after. I wouldn't dare ask such a question. No. Adam West? Yeah. Thank you for your time, sir. I've got a uh, cat up a tree. Another nut. So, I'll see you later, Adam. It's nice meeting you. Thank you. I'm off to fight crime. Yes. Careful. Interesting little piece there, right? Uh -huh. It's funny, uh, normally Brendan doesn't keep his wardrobe. You know, he's normally like, yeah, it's cool, I'll wear yeah. it on the show. For some reason, that outfit has been missing for months. Same as your Pokemon outfit you wore the other day. Hey, you gotta catch Can't them all. Can't find it. Gotta catch them all. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, Olivia, uh, Cesar Romero, who played a Joker on the old Batman mm -hmm. series. I don't know if you know this. Really fun fact, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Portuguesa, just like me. Wow, you must be very proud. Mm -hmm. How about we play Top Gun? All right, I'll be, I'll be uh, Tom Cruise. You make an awesome Kelly McGillis. Really? Thanks. Yeah. You'd be an okay Tom Cruise. Thanks. Now, you're not going to take me to your church and, like, hook me up to your car battery or anything like that, are you? <laughs> no. Uh, why don't we look at Brendan's experience in a flight simulator first, and then we'll talk about the car batteries. Did you just impregnate me? Twice. I'm here at the Flightline Flight Simulator Center in Irvine, California, where I'm going to learn how to fly and crash repeatedly. We have uh, four cockpits that are two-seat cockpits that can have pilot and co-pilot. We've got a whole air traffic controller uh, arrangement where each of the aircraft are networked together so that they can all fly together as well as being guided by the air traffic controller. We've got upwards of dozens of, of switches and, and buttons in there are all operable. First step, briefing. This is the talk button. You need to know this button because if you have a problem, you have a question, if you're lonely. What if I peed my pants? Do I want to hit that button? <sighs> uh, yeah, you could. Used to fly this one during the war. So the wheels need to be down. On the ground. When you want to land. Yes. Check. What's uh, this button do? Uh, the one marked eject? Yeah. Don't push that. Have a fun time, sir. Oh, God, that closes? <laughs> 102, can you hear the tar? This is 102, B dog, uh, loud and clear. Pull as hard as you can back towards you, two. Oh, a little too much, two, a little too much. 
Rotate right until I tell you to stop. Fast, fast, fast. Rotate right, rotate right, two. Rotate right. Now pull, pull, pull. As hard as you can, almost there. Oh, don't worry, that plane didn't need that paint job anyway. Those look like good shots, too. Oh, 102. Welcome to the Japanese Navy. Kamikaze. You're in range, fire. Come on. Damn it. Two, that's a confirmed double kill. Double kill, baby! We are blowing up the nuclear facility, correct? Only if you want to go home glowing green and uh, not able to please anybody ever again for the rest of your life. All right, so we're not blowing up the nuclear facility. Welcome home. Great job today, gentlemen. Prepare for ground crew to relieve you of your planes. Well, I died eight times, but I did land. And landing is the most important part of flying. The landing. Mm, there really is something about a man in uniform. Seriously? Because mm. I, I, mean, I used to be a good humor man, so I could totally uh, slip that on. And uh, another time, perhaps. Uh, stick around, everybody. There's lots more to come, including a trip to the future of all places when Attack of the Show continues. It was for Halloween. I still have it. I don't want to see you in that. Thanks, though. You want to see me out of it? I just like you like a friend. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Attack of the Show's Road Trip Special Edition. We're going to geek out at Wizard Con and thrill to competitive lawnmower racing. But first... Wired Magazine's Next Fest is an annual showcase of the newest and coolest and cutting-edge technology. Yeah, and this year it was actually in Chicago, so huh? sci-fi gadgets and deep dish pizza? Where do I sign? I'm always hungry. Welcome to Chicago, home of the next best Wired World's Fair. It's kind of like the world of tomorrow. A world of flying cars, Philip K. Dick robots, and bionic nurses that can lift you clear out of bed. So follow me, won't you? You know what, we gotta go around the other way. So It's a flying car. It's really a flying car. The Jetsons are coming true. Tell me about it. Does it make that little, like, annoying sound, you know, when George no, was off to work? The F-400 is designed to take off and land vertically and then go up to about 350 miles an hour. The last test flight we did was back in, I think, November of 2003. And now we have engines that are about twice as much horsepower as what we had before. And we'll be demonstrating late in the fall or early in the spring of next year. Gotcha. Couldn't see me, could you? It's because I'm wearing this reflective coat, which is made out of the same type of stuff that they put on freeways to reflect light. What you're seeing is actually coming at me, bouncing behind me, and coming straight back at you. And that's why you can only see my hands and my face. And now you can't see me at all. This is called Retro Reflection Projection Technology. It's the Invisible Human Project. In contrast to regular mirrors in which angle of incidence, angle of reflection, the light comes straight back at you in the direction that it was shown. If you're feeling lazy, hook up your favorite nurse with this thing. So she's getting in the power assist suit right now and she's gonna lift me off the bed as if I were some sort of bedridden invalid, which I'm not. It's air compressed, so it knows how much air to release based on the sensors on the nurse's muscles. So is it comfortable? Oh, yeah. It is? I think I'm right about as heavy as they'll let me be. I'm 170. I had a big breakfast, though, so I'm not really sure how this is going to play out. First time I've ever been picked up by a woman. I'm in the market for some robot minions. That looks like a great place to shop. Yeah, yeah. Evil overlords will gather in New York mm -hmm. this September for the next Next Fest. So you can get the deals at nextfest.net. Hey, Kevin, what's in the fridge? Uh, juice, soda, some, some purple stuff, and oh, alcohol. Alcohol. Awesome. It reminds me of the Lush and Mardi Gras. Mm. <laughs> Mardi Gras 2006. I'm here in New Orleans, right outside of Head O'Brien's. It's a bar famous for making 
the hurricane. We're doing the lush here, and for once, I'm gonna get to see other people get f***ed up. What's your name? Pat O'Brien's has been in business since 1933. We actually opened down the street a block from here. Um, in 1942, we moved to this location. We've been around for 73 years now. Uh, we're right in the middle of our bar Mardi Gras season. Uh, it's uh, uh, post-Katrina, but the crowds are good, and you know, people are coming back in the city. It's a fun time like it is usually every year. What are you drinking? Uh, hurricane. You can't see this at home, but he just drank 15 ounces of hard liquor. So now you're from New Orleans. You probably don't partake in the traditional New Orleans kind of thing, you know, that girls do to get beads. We're doing an interview here, pal. You know what I mean? Not at all, but they are right there. Who's doing that? Are there girls taking their shirt? Nice, nice meeting you. What are you wearing? I'm wearing Prada and a penis. <laughs> That's about the size of mine. Danielle, you're clearly 14 years old. <laughs> I'm 23. Okay. Whatever you want to say, I'll look at your driver's license later. Well, we sure have learned a lot this week. Actually, we haven't learned anything, really, but it's all been fun. Tune in next time for another segment of The Lush. Have you ever been to Mardi Gras? Olivia? No, I haven't. But, you know, um, rumor on the office is that you've gone before a couple times, and you have yeah. a lot of beads. Yeah. How'd you get yeah. those beads? I, uh, I, uh, it's funny. I drop-kicked a woman in the throat, and then I just took them right off her neck. <laughs> she was bleeding a lot. It was really weird, actually. I didn't think That's she'd do that. That's funny. Yeah. Did you know, uh, fun fact, though, Mardi Gras actually means Fat Tuesday. You know, I always thought it meant ruined innocence. It does. It's okay. You'll get it back. All right, we've got lots more of this road trip special edition coming up, including a day at the lawnmower races when Attack of the Show continues. Woo! Kevin, that's what, how you got in trouble before. Attack of the Show, baby. Attack. Welcome back to an Attack of the Show special edition. Tonight, we're all about epic road trips. That's right. You know, some people... Some people look at a lawnmower and they think only of tedious yard work, but some speed demons see a chance at true bragging rights. Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. All right. For all those, all those people out there, who have fought the lawn and the lawn's won, this is where you can come beat it. I'm here in Knoxville, Tennessee, home of the USLMRA Championships, the United States Lawnmower Racing Association Championships. And it's a lot more serious than you think. Lawnmower racing, stable national lawnmower racing series. We are rocking and mowing. We got racers from about 10 different states, and it's gonna be mow time. When that green flag goes down, it's every bit as serious as NASCAR. Have you ever seen anything more exciting than this? No, I haven't. How fast can you make this thing go? The VP, I've run 91 in a straight line. 91 miles an hour? 91 miles an hour, yes. On a lawnmower? Yes, sir. Did you ever get scared? Uh, on the mower? Of course <laughs> I do. As a woman, do you think you have any advantages over these guys? I don't think so. No, uh... You have to say yes. Let's try it again. Oh. As a woman, do you think you have any advantages over these guys? Oh, sure. <laughs> now, it's a pretty simple sport, but there are a few rules. There's no blades, and everybody needs to wear a helmet and a neck brace. Other than that, anything mows. I've had one up to 70 before. On a lawnmower? Yeah. This is a big girl right here compared to some of the other ones. It's kind of heavy, right? Actually, this one's one of the lighter ones. How fast do you think she can go? Uh, flat out, I'll probably do 50, 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour. With lawnmower tires that are rated to go 15 miles an hour. Sounds like a great idea. Kev, do you prefer lawn gnomes or flamingos? 
I'm, I'm actually like a, a little windmill kind of guy. Interesting. Isn't it though? You know what yeah. else is interesting? For breaking E3 news, you can turn to E3insider.com. Seriously. Yeah, that's the official website of E3. Yeah, just turn to E3insider.com for news, demos, and Joel Gordine's unique fan cam coverage of the events as they unfold. Watch it live or download the podcast of all your E3 news at E3insider.com. Our next road trip took Blair Butler, the coolest nerdy girl I know, to Wizard World for their annual convention. She really digs that stuff. We've been to comic book conventions all over the country, but Wizard World is different because it's in L.A. and that means it's full of celebrities, or at least people who are celebrities to big nerds like me. Wizard World is also different because it's presented by Wizard Magazine. This is the biggest comic book magazine in the industry, and it's kind of like Playboy for nerds, except the centerfolds are men in really snug spandex. This is Mr. December. His name is Superman. His pet peeves include kryptonite and bald men who Kill. Wizard World is mecca to the magazine's thousands of readers, and as we discovered, many of them dress a little differently. I noticed that that you have uh, you still have some machinery coming out of you. It's it the lighting is surprisingly festive down there. Looks like Wolverine's having Christmas in his pants. Well, I like that you have like super bling. Why? Thank you. Do you read Wizard magazine? Oh yes, every month. Do you read it for the articles or for the centerfold? If you know what I mean. You know, it's been a lifelong dream to appear on the cover of Wizard magazine. I, I have no idea whose arm that is. I'm here with Brian Posehn. He's been on Mr. Show, Comedians of Comedy, and now he is the co-author of a new comic, The Last Christmas. Can you tell us a bit about it? It's uh, a funny book where the apocalypse happens and Santa Claus is alive, and he starts to deliver toys to kids that still believe in him. Uh, is there anything that you want to say to all the big nerdy fans? Keep playing games and keep buying comic books and start masturbating less. The great thing about L.A. is that sometimes you run into celebrities who are just trying to escape the building. What was the allure for you to, to do the comics? I know you'd done Frey uh, for Dark Horse and a lot of the Angel and Buffy stuff for Dark Horse. What brought you over to Marvel? I grew up on Marvel as much as anything in the world. X-Men is where I learned to write, so there was no way I couldn't take that job. And up next for you is the uh, the Wonder Woman movie. How's that going? Uh, I just finished the script, uh, and so they'll tell me how it's going. Can we get any casting tidbits? Uh, it'll be a woman. It's been a great day at Wizard World LA, and looking back on it, I realize that I'm the shortest freaking person here. Those fan conventions look like so much fun. No, totally. Yeah. Uh, say that, though, uh, after you go to Comic-Con. Yeah. I'm excited to go to Comic-Con. All right. All right, we'll see. All right, stay tuned for more of our special road trip edition, including a blood-curdling visit to Fangoria Magazine's annual conclave right after these messages. I'm really excited for Comic-Con. I just totally dismissed you, though. You're like, I'm excited. I'm like, whatever. I know, you're rude. Attack of the show, baby. Attack. Welcome back to this special edition of Attack of the Show. Yeah, we're just eight days out from E3 and the year's biggest news on titles for the PlayStation 3, Nintendo Revolution, and the Xbox 360. Keep it right here on G4 all through our E3 countdown for up to the second news about the year's biggest gaming event. Yes. Now, our live marathon coverage begins May 9th at 6 p.m. Eastern. But if you want to see something really scary... It's not Louis Anderson in a wet unitard, is it? Ooh, no, 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 no. Not quite that scary. I'm thinking more along the lines of Fangoria Magazine's Weekend of Horrors convention. You know what's scarier? What? Old references. Ooh. Fangoria's Weekend of Horrors is here in Burbank, California, and fans here have a thirst for blood. And I forgot my black T-shirt. The dealer's room is filled with horror oddities you won't find in any store, and the best part is, you can buy them. So, uh, Edward, tell me, exactly what is this 3D art? Uh, these are known as lenticulars. Uh, they are changing portraits, and basically I've taken old orphan photographs, I've adopted them as my own, scanned them in, and brought out the inner creatures of the night in all of these people. <laughs> Who's your favorite horror film actor? Probably Bruce Campbell. We actually have a son, and we named him Ash. Bruce Campbell, definitely. Well, definitely Bruce Campbell, which is why I'm here. What is your impression of fans at this convention? 
They're a unique breed. Uh, I had a little presentation where we were showing something to a group, and I found a guy who was not wearing a black T-shirt. I kicked him out of the room. He was a, he was a nonconformist. He was a freak. Tell me, what are you doing here at the Weekend of Horrors? I'm introducing Man with a Screaming Brain. It's kind of like the out-of-towners with a brain transplant. A greedy American businessman. Through a series of strange events, he gets part of a communist guy's brain put into his. So it's the reconciliation of the capitalists and the communists. That sounds way too smart for some of the horror fans here. I gotta tell you, it could... But the horror fans here are really smart. The ones with the black t-shirts, they're the smartest of all. How would you like to be killed in a horror film? I would like to be disemboweled so my guts fall onto the floor and I get to look down and experience it. Definitely by a hot vampirist. Could you tell us more? I would like to be decapitated. Why only decapitated? I mean, someone could skull you, right? Well, th that, that would be cool, but they'd have to take him out to dinner first. I've been stabbed, but uh, but I think after that, they'd want to, like, silence me because I'd be saying a lot of stupid things. I poop my pants! So I think next, they'd cut off my tongue. Yeah, the best way would probably be if, like, uh, uh, Kevin Prayer was committing suicide off the Empire State Building and landed on my head. That'd be great. Okay, who's cooler, horror fans or sci-fi fans? Uh, Attack of the Show fans, duh. Well, that's because AOTS fans are up to the moment. They're connected. They're hip. They're with it, mm. you know? They have hula hoops. They have the latest news, the latest gadgets. It's like they're, they're living in the future. Except no rocket packs. Yeah, but if you really want to know, like, if you really want to feel like you're living in the future, then just take a trip to Next Fest. I want a hoverboard. They don't exist. <laughs> Back here reporting in Chicago, the Wired World's Fair. Now, there's a lot of really cool things to see here. There's flying cars, there's submarines, and there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, like this fog screen that's projecting my image. Watch my high kick now. So this is kick-ass kung fu. Right. Do you have any more of those shirts? Um, you can buy them online at kickasskungfu.net. Good answer. This can be used in arcades or in amusement parks and stuff. The computer sees and hears you through camera and microphone. It puts you in the, the game. So I'm playing brain ball, and the idea is to just relax your brain. And the one who's the most chilled out actually gets to win. You're going down. Oh, it's over within seconds. I beat that little kid. Behind me are these things called juke bots. They're two arms that pick up records and scratch them simultaneously. The cool thing is they're about twice the DJ with half the pretension and addiction to designer drugs. We're using these blowing interfaces. Now, what we're doing is we're controlling a balloon which uh, hovers over different landscapes. The aim of the game is to collect different icons. You're using wind power to yeah, control right. something on yeah. a screen, right? Yeah. These are golf balls that are made to dissolve in water. Yeah. Really? Yes. Can you hit them just as far as a normal golf ball? No, they, they, it's a good question. They only travel about 75%. The real golf ball. A lot of private people that live on the ocean or have a yacht. They have a temporary green on board. Why didn't I think of that? Damn it. It's weird. I think that's the, the first and probably the last time I ever saw Brennan actually use his brain. Oh, snap. I'm just being honest. Hit a man when he's down, when he's out, hey, he's gone. He's gone. It doesn't matter. What does it matter? Everybody, stay where you are. We'll be right back with more of this Attack of the Show special edition right after this. Sadly, that's all for tonight, folks. Yes, keep your TV tuned to G4 doing our countdown to E3. Yeah, yeah, our live team coverage begins May 9th at 6 p.m. Eastern when we'll have hands-on demos of all the most anticipated titles for the Nintendo Revolution, the PlayStation 3, and, of course, the Xbox 360. But until then, I'm Kevin Pereira. And I'm Olivia Munn. But before we go, enjoy this look at Poseidon, which opens in theaters May 12th. May you all have sailing in all the years to come. I'd like you to call me at midnight for old time's sake. You think I don't want to wear it? I don't
don't know. I'm starting to wonder. New Year's is never what you expect, is it? Happiest time of my life is when I was broke. All in. You think he's bluffing you, Honor? I think this is gonna be a very interesting night. Something's off. moment of your lives we will be safe you think you can get us off this book but i can let's stick together we can help each other find a way out ships weren't designed to stay afloat upside down i'm within my authority to compel you to stay don't think you can stop me i got an access hatch here we don't know where he goes if we stay here we drown just reach out Nothing fair about who lives and who dies. 